Genesis 39. Now Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian official of Pharaoh, the captain of the bodyguard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. And Yahweh was with Joseph, so he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that Yahweh was with him, and how Yahweh caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and attended on him. And he appointed him overseer of his house, and all that he owned he gave in his hand. Now it happened that from that time he appointed him overseer in his house, and over all that he owned. Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph. Thus the blessing of Yahweh was upon all that he owned, in the house and in the field. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's hand, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was beautiful in form and beautiful in appearance. And it happened after these events that his master's wife set her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has given all that he owns into my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? So it happened that as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the household was there inside. Then she seized him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and went outside. Now it happened, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and had fled outside, that she called to the men of her household, and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought in a Hebrew to us, to laugh at us. He came in to me, to lie with me, and I screamed. Now it happened, that when he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me, and fled, and went outside. And she placed his garment beside her, until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with these words, saying, The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came in to me to laugh at me. And as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Now it happened that when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke to him, saying, This is what your slave did to me, his anger burned. So Joseph's master took him and put him into the jail, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the jail. But Yahweh was with Joseph and extended loving kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. So the chief jailer gave into the hand of Joseph all the prisoners who were in the jail, so that whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's hand because Yahweh was with him, and whatever he did, Yahweh made to succeed. Mark 9 and Jesus was saying to them, Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God having come in power. And six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and brought them up on a high mountain alone by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments were shining intensely white as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three booths, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to answer, for they became terrified. Then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And all at once, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, except Jesus alone. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to recount to anyone what they had seen, until the Son of Man rose from the dead. And they seized upon that statement, arguing with one another what rising from the dead meant. And they began asking him, saying, Why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said to them, Elijah does first come and restore all things. And yet how is it written of the Son of Man that he will suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has indeed come, and they did to him whatever they wished, just as it is written of him. And when they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed. And as they ran up, they were greeting him. And he asked them, What are you arguing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, Teacher, 
I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground, and he foams at the mouth, and he grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. And he answered them and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion, and falling to the ground, he began rolling around, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and was saying, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Now when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out, and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and he stood up. And when he came into the house, his disciples began questioning him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. From there they went out and were going through Galilee, and he was not wanting anyone to know about it. For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he has been killed, he will rise again three days later. But they did not understand this statement, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he began to question them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another which of them was the greatest. And sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. And taking a child, he set him before them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to hinder him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you are of Christ, truly I say to you, he will not lose his reward. And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe to stumble, it would be better for him if, with a heavy millstone hung around his neck, he had been cast into the sea. And if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands to go into hell, into the unquenchable fire, and where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to be cast into hell and where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace with one another. Job 5. Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? And to which of the holy ones will you turn? For vexation kills the ignorant fool, and jealousy puts to death the simple. I have seen the ignorant fool taking root, and I cursed his abode suddenly. His sons are far from salvation, they are even crushed in the gate, and there is no deliverer. His harvest the hungry devour, and take it to a place of thorns, and the schemer pants after their wealth. For wickedness does not come out from the dust, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. For man is born for trouble, as sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God, and I would set my cause before God, who does great and unsearchable things, wonders without number. He gives rain on the earth, and sends water on the fields outside, so that he sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to salvation. He frustrates the thoughts of the crafty, 
so that their hands cannot attain success of sound wisdom. He catches the wise by their own craftiness, and the counsel of the twisted is quickly thwarted. By day they meet with darkness, and grope at noon as in the night. But he saves from the sword of their mouth, and the needy from the hand of the strong. So the poor has hope, and unrighteousness must shut its mouth. Behold, how blessed is a man whom God reproves! So do not reject the discipline of the Almighty. For he inflicts pain and gives relief. He wounds, and his hands also heal. From six distresses he will deliver you. Even in seven evil will not touch you. In famine he will redeem you from death, and in war from hands with swords. You will be hidden from the scourge of the tongue, and you will not be afraid of devastation when it comes. You will laugh at devastation and starvation, and you will not be afraid of the beast of the earth. For your covenant will be with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is at peace, for you will visit your abode and fear no loss. You will know also that your seed will be many, and your offspring as the vegetation of the land. You will come to the grave in full vigor, like the stacking of grain in its season. Behold this, we have investigated it, and so it is. Hear it, and know for yourself. Romans 9. I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom belongs the adoption as sons, and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the temple service and the promises, whose are the fathers, and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel, nor are they all children because they are Abraham's seed. But through Isaac your seed will be named. That is, the children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are considered as seed. For this is the word of the promise, at this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but there was Rebekah also, when she had conceived twins by one man, our father Isaac. For though the twins were not yet born, and had not done anything good or bad, so that the purpose of God according to his choice would stand, not because of works, but because of him who calls, it was said to her, The older shall serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there any unrighteousness with God? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the one who wills or the one who runs, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up, in order to demonstrate my power in you and in order that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. You will say to me then, Why does he still find fault? For who resists his will? On the contrary, who are you, O man, who answers back to God? Will the thing molded say to the molder, Why did you make me like this? Or does not the potter have authority over the clay? to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use. And what if God, wanting to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath having been prepared for destruction, in order that he might make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he also called, not from among Jews only, but also from among Gentiles? As he says also in Hosea, I will call those who were not my people, my people, and her who was not beloved, beloved. And it shall be that in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the sons of Israel be like the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that will be saved. For the Lord will execute his word on the land thoroughly and quickly. And just as Isaiah foretold, unless the Lord of Sabbath had left us to a seed, 
we would have become like Sodom and would have resembled Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That Gentiles, who did not pursue righteousness, laid hold of righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith? But Israel, pursuing a law of righteousness, did not attain that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as though it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, just as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and the one who believes upon him will not be put to shame.